Welcome everybody to the What a Relief podcast on the Fish Stripes Podcast Network. I'm your host, Noah Berger. This is our final episode of the 2022 season. We have uh, Richard Blyer here and the closer, or as some people like to call him, the flozer, uh, uh, Dylan Floro. How are you both doing? We're doing Good. wonderful. All right. So... <laughs> Um, I'm going to start with, with Dylan. Um, this season started out a little bit later on for you. Uh, you had you started spring training uh, a, bit, a bit banged up. What, what went on during yeah, that time? what did go on? Uh, just, I had, was, was dealing with some shoulder stuff there. Again, I don't, it's been two years in a row now, so I don't know, just kind of dealing with that stuff. I mean, it's kind of hurt me the last two years, so going and changing this whole off-season program and mixing things up a little bit, so hopefully I come to the next spring training ready to go. What, at what point in the season did you feel like you were back to, like, 100%? Uh, I'd probably say for sure, probably the last two or three, mo- two months, two months, two or three months, if I, where I got, feel like I had the life of my four seam back at the top of the zone and just executing pitches night in and night out. Um, an interesting stat that someone pointed out to me you have a zero ERA when Nick Fortes is behind the plate. Is there something you guys do differently when he's behind the plate? I I didn't know anything about that, so I have no idea. I mean, I think they're, I, we, we got two really good catchers, and that's just happens. How what a politically correct answer, you know. <laughs> Keep going. Come on. <laughs> Come bash on. somebody. Who cares? Why? Why? There's nothing to bash. I'm I mean, kidding. No, they're both great. They're Keep good. going. Uh. Um, Richard, I wanted, I got many questions for you, but I'm going to go with recency bias. The box. <laughs> Take us through what happened and, like, your thoughts on the mound when that's all going on. And he calls the first box, the second one, and then ultimately the third. Let's get Floro's take on it. Floro, what do you think about the box? I think... Did I balk, yes or no? You balked on one of them for sure. I agree with a lot of people. We have these conversations. A lot of people. Yeah. Uh. So <laughs> have you ha, have you seen John Boy Media's breakdown? Yeah. Right? We yeah. just watched Did that you last see night. We watched the, it the as end a group. Of it yeah. Where it shows the side by sides. Yeah. So the box. Um, the first one maybe I got a little sloppy with the only because I'm facing Pete Alonso as uh, you know in the eighth inning or whatever inning it was and uh, um, I don't I still don't see. I don't see it. Whatever. I just haven't seen it. I do give um, the umpire credit, though, for having the willpower to call three. You know, good for him um, to go out there and and really make that example of of me as uh, as you know. They got an email apparently about we're going to start enforcing. Um, the coming set thing, and and they he he went out there and enforced it to the best of his ability. Did you get Did you get a chance to speak with uh, John Tumpain at any point afterward? So I pitched the next night, and he just came out there and, and said, um, "You know what we're looking for? Said, yeah, yeah I'm really aware of what we're, what we got going on now." Um, and then and he said, "Okay, cool." Uh, and that was pretty much the end of it. So you know, it's it's all good. Um, you know, he's doing his job, and that it's his opinion. And it obviously doesn't matter what my opinion is because um, I wouldn't have called box against me. You know, but I also would call every pitch a strike, and and it's not. So uh, it is what it is. Hopefully, I don't do it again. It's embarrassing. So you got your first save of the season this past weekend in Milwaukee. Um, the question for both of you, and I'll start with you, Richard. What the mindset going when you were coming onto the mound in uh, different settings and higher leverage? How does it change your approach when you're pitching in, let's say, the seventh inning as opposed to pitching in the right. ninth inning with the game on the line? Yeah, so that's a great question. So I was actually thrilled to go in the ninth for that save, knowing I'm taking a save away from Floro. <laughs> it just it made my day, uh, and that's all I was thinking about every out. I'm like, I just need to get this save. So Floro doesn't get it. No, he wasn't available to pitch or else he would have been in there. Um, For me, I always treat, like I haven't pitched in the ninth. I don't project as a closer uh, with the stuff. Um, So I haven't pitched in the ninth much. But with the lead, 
uh, in general, I think it, it, if you if you make it a big deal, it becomes a big deal. Uh, so I just try to go out there and make my pitches, whether the score's one nothing or five nothing, or it's the seventh or the ninth or the fifth. I, I just think that I'm trying to execute pitches. And the same question for you, Dylan. Yeah, I agree with him. I mean. I think the more pressure you put on yourself, the more chances you're going to end up leaving a pitch over there. I mean, I, and later in the game, when you get to the eighth, ninth inning like that, you got to execute each pitch. I mean, I know a lot of times you put too much pressure on yourself, but what I've learned over the last couple of years to be able to get the chance to close is just go out there and trust my stuff and just execute and have a game plan at the interior. Um, so... You guys pretty much already answered my question on if there's any internal competition between you guys. It's pretty obvious there is. Um, the what would each of you consider? <laughs> what would each of you consider to be your best or your favorite pitch to throw in your arsenals? I like the ones that get outs. Yeah. Um, I mean, I couldn't. I couldn't say I could pick one pitch. I mean, it just depends on who I'm facing, how, and what I set them up like. Some days, like this year, it's been my slider. Last year, it's been like my changeup. I know. Been four seams up. I know my favorite pitches for him. His slider, since I coached him on it, and the four <laughs> seam up and into a lefty. Because I know if he's able to throw the four seam up and in, everything else is going to be really good. Back to specific questions. Um, your walk up song, For Whom the Bell Tolls, when did you decide to use that? I didn't decide to use that at all. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Who decided it? Who did decide that? It wasn't me. It was somebody else. It, somebody just picked it for him. Somebody he didn't picked care. it for him, and then the they first, turned it into a whole big thing. The first time, because he, we, he came. He was the closer last year, and we wanted some cool song for him. And he's like, oh, I don't care. I'm Floro. I don't care. And uh, and so, what was it the first time? Wasn't it like yeah, like Backstreet Boys, Backstreet or, Boys or something? But that was really bad. So we went with. <laughs> Uh, somebody picked that was that Metallica song or whatever. Yeah, I think so. It goes with the music. It's cool. Um, so you pitched in the World Series in 2020. Oh God, um, here we go. And uh, what was it like going through that season and the postseason of that year without any fans in the stands, and then all of a sudden in the World Series you had limited fans in that new Texas ballpark. So, what was that like going through? I mean, it's. I mean, I got to taste a little bit of playoff stuff and like an 18 there, so I think it helped me prepare for a little bit going on 20. I mean, it definitely 18 to 20 when you have the fans and all and that stuff involved makes it feels like it's 10 times excluded what really is going on. I mean, it's still just the game we're playing here, and you got to go out there and execute a pitch. Uh, where do you keep your your World Series ring? Uh, I think it's just at home somewhere. I is it know. full size or is it a little smaller since it was a shorter season? It's a full season. size Full thing, size yeah. ring? Just yeah. want to make sure. I Same as sure. your playoff share you got. Shh, you can't talk about that stuff. You can't talk about money. You know that. <laughs> well, it's speaking of share. <laughs> speaking of money, uh, you signed a two-year contract for the season. You said, uh, don't give me money, I'll spend it. Um, uh, you said that? I said it's a jazz. Like, like I should have choose my words a little wiser, knowing I was negotiating a contract. Don't give me money. I'll spend it. <laughs> I was just joking with Jazz. Carry on. I know where this is going. Yeah, I bought something. I know you bought you bought a Tesla. No big deal. You know, you the environment you stuff. Enjoying it? It's the best <laughs> car on the planet. Um, so, um, Since I bought one. There are more. More have shown up in the players' lot. Just so you know, they're everywhere. So I have heard. I, I hear there's a there's a comp, there's a bit of a battle over the charger spot. Absolutely, it's a serious problem. Um, so we talked about him. Uh, uh, we talked about Dylan pitching in the World Series in that new Rangers ballpark. You've pitched in every ballpark other than. I pitched in the old, yeah. In, in, other than the new Rangers ballpark. Of all the ballparks you've been to, what's your f ideal setup and what's your favorite ballpark to warm up in? Which bullpen setup is your favorite? Oh, okay. Go warm up in? Warm up in and then go out to pitch. Um, kind of yeah, intriguing. I thought you were going to ask about just my favorite. So my favorite ballpark to play in is Atlanta. Um, but specifically warm up in... 
probably Chicago because it's up and under there. There's nobody to. No one picking up. Yeah, nobody <laughs> making fun of me. Or how slow I throw. Yeah, maybe Chicago. Other than that, um, I mean, warming up wise, I think they're all. As far as coming from the bullpen into the game, I would probably go Oakland because it's the shortest draw again. It's shorter than Tampa's. It's probably About relative. Same, yeah. yeah. I'll go Tampa because I can't give Oakland the best at anything. No offense to Oakland. It's just um, the bullpen situation is rough for, for us. I will say that. Um, do you, are you guys ever, like, uh, like scared when you're sitting in, in Oakland, in Tampa, when you're sitting along the side and for a foul ball can come? Is it, you, you guys have to pay more attention? You're less relaxed out there? You're more tense? No, we actually have a lot of fun. Um, with those guys, the ball guys, uh, it, the Oakland guy, that was a lot of fun this year with that guy. Um, he was making plays for us, so I think it was, it was entertaining. Um, so, Richard, you grew up in Miami. Um, there's a picture of you at your bar mitzvah, I think. Yeah. What shul was that at, out of curiosity? Where's this picture at? It's, I'm sure he has it, whatever. Um, I can show it to you after. Uh, trying to think about what that God, I wish you would have asked me this question beforehand um in Cooper City it's no longer around I don't uh Temple Beth not Moshe that's Beth Israel I don't know I don't remember what it's called it was when I was 13 I don't remember what I did yesterday it was in Cooper City I probably could find it but it's no longer there no I know that there. it's like a it, I don't even whatever it's not there anymore it's something else did you what year were you drafted? 2008. 2008. What yeah. year were you pre in high school? Pre-computers. Uh, 2005, I graduated wow. high school. So did you grow up going to Marlins games? I did, yeah. So what's it mean to you to end up pitching for the, for the team that you grew up watching? Yeah, it's really cool. It's been a great experience. Uh, at first, coming over in 2020, um, in the middle of COVID and when three-quarters of the team had COVID, was definitely an interesting uh, time, but but as I kind of got settled in and acclimated to the Marlins, I realized that it's really a, it's going to be a great setup for me, playing at home and spring training in Jupiter, not in Arizona. So it's been it's been a lot of fun, and um, I think a bonus has been being able to see the players that I watch come through, uh, like Juan Pierre's around and, and like Dontrell Willis and. Cliff Ford, like these guys, that I, I hate to like I hate saying like I, I grew up watching them play because I don't want to age them or whatever. But you know, like those guys that when I was in high school, when I was really watching the Marlins, uh, they were they were on this team and, and thriving. So it's been it's been really cool to kind of meet them, really, fanboy. So, uh, question for both of you: we'll Start with Dylan. You got any off-season plans? Uh, not really. I'm a Yes, you do. I just, I just bought a new RV, so I'm probably gonna do some going on camping and hang out with the family. It's been a while. So I haven't got to see him in a long time. You like to camp? <laughs> yeah. Nice. Um. So I, he, yeah, we both have families, um, and I've got a kid on the way, so I'll be doing. Um, thank you. I'll be doing. Child things Start all over. Um, yeah. and the, the world baseball classic coming up yeah um, how much is that going to affect your preparation for next season uh, it's in spring so it it's kind of you know you got to be game ready whether it's in a spring training game or a world baseball classic game uh, I think you kind of have to be a little bit far, you don't want to embarrass yourself in front of that kind of audience but um you know, I, I have plans this off season, baseball wise, uh, and, and things I want to improve on. Um, so I'm definitely motivated and, and looking forward to getting getting started uh, sooner and getting those things, um, getting to work on that. Um, so you mentioned uh, wanting to improve on stuff. Is there anything specific that uh, you want to improve on from previous years, and anything specific you want to improve on going into next year? Uh, just refining pitches and. Um, building off of kind of the second half where uh, I made a few changes in um, in my pitch selection and um, really just what I'm using and what I'm throwing and, and just 
making those pitches a little bit better and figuring out what works in different situations more so uh, you know, like uh, yep so I relied heavily on sinker cutter last year and and earlier in the year the it, it kind of it wasn't working and so I started using uh, my changeup more and my slider a little bit more to righties mostly to righties and um, and my four seam a little bit more and and so I just want to get the best versions of those pitches and the, and figure out the best spots to use those pitches in. Um, before I ask Dylan the same question, uh, just going back to... I feel like I'm talking a lot and he's barely <laughs> talking. Uh, there's, like a, there's a possibility that uh, Team Israel could play against the Marlins in, spring, in the spring training exhibition game. Um, who on the team are you most looking forward to facing? John Birdie. Why? Very specific reason. When he plays left field, I throw, I warm up with the outfielder in like the fifth inning every time, and he cannot even catch my sinker. You throw it at the wrinkle. So I know for a fact he's not going to hit it. So I'm looking forward to facing him. <laughs> you throw it at the wrinkle. No, I yes. don't. He cannot catch it. It's right at his chest. Hits him in the thigh. You throw. Uh, ask Bert. Uh, let's ask Floro a question. Uh, is there anything specific that you're looking to improve on going into next season? Um, approve on just. Fine, just fine tuning my pitches and stuff like that. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, my changeup has been 50-50 this year, and just improving my slider, just trying to make it more consistent, more even better. Just because right now it's been it's been really good for me the last last month or so, and just trying to improve on that so I get execution and then all my pitches kind of fine tune them so everything's ready to go at the beginning of the year. We're really hoping. Floro can come into spring training healthy. That's his biggest thing he's looking forward to this offseason. So we changed his plan. He got with me. We talked it over. We got a new plan this offseason. We're going to do something. I don't think he has much to do. And then, and so he's going to come in, and he's going to act like it, and he's going to be pitching like, a, like it's September and April. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, uh, one more question before we get to the little short quiz. Uh, which you are being graded on. Um, oh, Anthony good. Bass uh, asked me to ask you guys how your marriage is going. Oh, we're doing great. We're, we're rock <laughs> solid. Uh, two years going on 100, yeah. you know. It's really, couldn't get any better. Yeah. Yeah? So, yeah, I guess. We guess. Started gaming a little bit. Yeah, yeah. we hang out at, <laughs> we're hanging out outside the field and everything. This is go, this is moving along it's steady. A little better than last year. Maybe he'll even talk to me this off season, respond to my texts. Who knows? You never know. We'll see. That's pushing it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I have, it's nine questions. Oof. Um, Oof. Wow. Oof. And it's based on your both of your careers, because you guys have very similar career numbers. Oh, it, um, fell this Between one. the yes. two of you, who do you think has pitched the most career innings? Oh, me for sure. Yeah. I would say Richard, because that's a year on me. So you have pitched 298 and two-thirds, and Dylan Flora, you've pitched 275. <laughs> Rookie. <laughs> you don't like that, man, your whole year. <laughs> Oh, between the two of you, who has the most wins? Definitely me. I've got a lot of wins. How many wins do you have? Uh, probably me. I'm just going to say me. So it's actually Dylan. Dylan has 21 wins, and Richard, you have 14. Sorry, buddy. 21? Oh, yeah. It's probably all those blown save wins type deals, you know? <laughs> Which one of you has the most career box? Uh, probably me. I don't know. Have you balked at all? Yeah, I got one for sure. We don't need to break, I, talk about that. Well, I definitely have three. It's probably more embarrassing <laughs> than yours. What'd you do? Drop the ball? No. Blew the game. Blocked. Walk off. Brutal. I should have looked this up before I brought it up. You balked a run in to blow the game? Yeah. With the Dodgers? Mm -hmm. No wonder they can't. Okay, can't we can you. keep going for <laughs> No wonder you're a Marlin. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we both have embarrassing box, but I have three of embarrassing box, and he only has one embarrassing he box. He has two. What was the other one? That's a good question. I don't know. I don't remember that one. I'll have to look it up. Uh, who has the lower career ERA? Oof, I've been giving up a lot of runs lately. I think Richard has it right now. I just, he, has a, he had a good career ERA coming into it. Yeah, but I'm blowing it Your big career time. ERA, Richard, is 3.07, and yours, Dylan, is 3.17. Oof. Very close. <laughs> Used to be in the twos. <laughs> which, which one of you has the most home runs allowed? 
Oh, we we both don't give up that many homers. How many have you given up this year? I think I only give up like three. I think I give up like two or th two, two. I three. would say him probably least. So me the most. So Richard, you've given up nineteen. Flora, you've given up sixteen. Yeah, Oof. I got that one right. Yeah. Which one of you has the most career strikeouts? Me. Definitely him. I don't strike yeah, out Yeah, it's, it's Flora <laughs> by a wide margin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was waiting for that one. That's a joke. Most about career that. saves. Flora, I have. Yeah. Most career wild pitches. That's that's tricky. I don't know. I probably have. I I, I think I I had two in one inning this year. Um, I don't know how many he has. I can't recall you ever throwing one, so I'll go with me. So Richard, you have thirteen. Dylan, you have seven. Oh, yeah, I got you in everything. <laughs> and most career hit batsman. Oh, I hit a lot of people. I hit some people. Probably me too. Yeah, Richard, you've hit 15. Dylan, you've only hit four. Oh, pump those numbers <laughs> up. Let's go. All right. Uh, so is there anything you guys would want to say to the listeners before we end off here? Um, yeah, we were trying to give a special shout-out to Golly, our Marlon's intern, who keeps um, interrupting this, <laughs> this podcast. She's doing great. She's eating. Um, what are you mm -hmm. eating right now, Golly? Nothing. She's eating something right now. She's a sweetheart. She's doing a great job. Golly, we appreciate you. Nice Jewish girl. <laughs> All right. Before either, before any of us get in any more trouble than we're already in, thank you everybody for that has listened to this throughout the season. Um, thank you to anyone who's listening now. Thank you to Fish Stripes for giving me the platform to do this on. Thank you to the Marlins for giving me the access. Thank you to Richard and Dylan for coming on to this, even though they were about an hour late. Um, Bail on you the last I'm time all together. Sure we're supposed to do this like a I, week ago. I feel like Don't I, they bash us all the time <laughs> and we're still doing their podcast? Keep going. Um, this has been the What Are Leaf Podcast on the Fish Strikes Podcast Network. I'm your host, Noah Berger. Thank you very much. We will be back next season with more from the Marlins bullpen.